He represents Silicon Valley in Congress. He's taught economics at Stanford, served as Deputy Assistant Secretary of Commerce in the Obama administration, and represented tech companies and startups in private practice. Now we can add author to his resume. Congressman Ro Khanna joins us now to discuss his new book, Dignity in a Digital Age, Making Tech Work for All of Us, where he explores his ideas about how to transform big tech from a threat to liberty into a genuine engine of democracy. Congressman Khanna, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. So in this digital age, you write that unequal access to technology and the revenue it creates is one of the most pressing issues facing the U.S. Can you elaborate on that and why you see it as such a major concern? Sure. In my district and surrounding areas, you have $11 trillion of market value. It has gone up 40% just during the pandemic. The pandemic Apple has gone from $1 trillion to $3 trillion. And yet the new economy has not worked for so many Americans who have not had the opportunities for wealth generation. They've seen jobs go offshore. They've seen deindustrialization. They've seen their kids have to leave their hometown and buy one-way tickets out. Uh, I'm proposing that we actually create technology jobs and opportunities in communities left out so you don't have to leave your hometown to prosper. It, what motivated you to write a book about the digital divide? I thought that people in my district, I saw young kids with robotics workshops in their garages, and they're so optimistic about America, so optimistic about the future. Uh, and yet that's not the case in uh, places where I grew up, in, in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, or other places I had visited. And I just thought it's unfair that so many people have been excluded from the opportunities for modern wealth generation, whether that's in rural America or in black or brown communities. And that's a policy choice. We could do th more things like having Intel invest $20 billion in New Albany, Ohio, creating 3,000 new jobs, 7,000 construction jobs. I mean, there's an excitement there. And why aren't we doing policies that uh, help bring the economic revival uh, of the heartland and the South uh, in the digital age? And you just kind of rattled off a few there. But any other additional ideas for how the digital economy can create these economic opportunities for people across the country, including in some of those rural areas that you mentioned? Sure. Let me give an example with uh, Claflin, which is one of the best uh, HBCUs in South Carolina. Zoom created a partnership there, and now you have young people there getting trained, getting jobs uh, with Zoom. But we need these kind of public-private partnerships with digital grant investment in universities across America. We need to prepare now people uh, for the digital age. And realize this is not saying everyone should become a coder. That's absurd. It's saying that even the manufacturing jobs, the retail jobs, the entertainment jobs, the journalism jobs are going to require technological skills to succeed. And what other policies or changes do you think need to be tackled first in order for that, that effort to, to actually close the digital divide? So the table stakes is broadband, affordable broadband everywhere, which we still don't have for about 20% of Americans. And then I would actually look at making sure that when these companies are bidding on federal contracts, when the federal government spends almost $80 billion on technology contracts, that you have a percent of the workforce come from rural communities, a percent come from African-American or Latino communities. It would force uh, these companies to uh, spread out in the search of talent. And then I have ideas for how we can spread out venture capital. Almost all the venture capital right now goes to California, uh, New York, and Massachusetts. And people like Steve Case with Rise of the Rest have been doing tremendous work to try to spread that capital out. Uh, because as Mitch Kapoor says, genius uh, doesn't exist in just one zip code, but the federal government can incentivize the dispersion of that capital. You also said tonight, and you mentioned it in the book, that no one should have to leave their hometown in order to find a decent job. As you well know, the pandemic has allowed millions of jobs to be done from anywhere. So does that provide any sense of optimism for you in avoiding that tech concentration in areas that currently monopolize work in the tech industry? Absolutely. That's partly what motivated me to write the book. I had the time to do it because I wasn't traveling as much in the pandemic. But I also saw that suddenly ideas that tech leaders thought uh, were crazy when I was saying, let's create jobs in the Midwest and the South back in 2016. Now they said, oh, of course we could do that. They almost had a forced experiment with remote work. 
In fact, one of the critiques of my book, I sent it to a venture capitalist and he said, well, we're already doing all this. I'm recruiting everywhere uh, and I'm uh, creating jobs everywhere. So uh, people in Silicon Valley went from thinking it's impossible to thinking it's already being done. And the truth is in between. Now we have the momentum to get this to happen uh, if we have the right policies. All right. Well, that is all positive. Uh, if, again, we get those policies implemented, as you describe, Congressman Ro Khanna, we thank you so much for your time. And his book, Dignity in a Digital Age, Making Tech Work for All of Us, is available now. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.